There is a direct relationship between well-made goods and price. And the reason is simple, because it takes time by skilled hands, usually working with some of the highest grade quality materials available and a certain level of artistry to produce these goods. So they cost a certain amount, but there is a trick. Just like with any investment, if you can identify young startup brands who really have the goods to make some incredible products, yet haven't scaled their business to the point where they have a lot of overhead, you can typically get a phenomenal product for a damn reasonable price. And there's also the issue of brand recognition. Think about brands like Louis Vuitton or Prada. You know, a lot of people will pay plenty of money just to be seen with those logos on their clothing or their bags or anything. And there's a certain level of prestige that some people care about. Personally, I'd rather have the quality goods that nobody knows who makes uh, compared to something that just has a brand name on it. I assume you're probably the same way. Young brands aren't saddled with that crazy overhead that a lot of their competitors already have, but they don't have the benefit of name brand recognition just yet. How do you figure out which brand is worth investing in early? Now, I use the term invest a bit liberally here, but in reality, what it is is you're making it, you know, you're buying something with the expectation that it will pay you back. Now, that doesn't have to be monetarily like you would with stocks and bonds, but we're talking about a payback over time of uh, the rewarding experience of owning wonderfully made goods. Take, for example, a couple of years ago, the brand that I think I did the first video on the net about, and I'm, I think that it might still be the only video out there, MYG Handmade with their awesome nail shank boots. Now, at $900, they're expensive, no doubt about it, but they were a bargain in the world of hand-welted, handmade boots. We were talking about one guy who was working out of a workshop with almost entirely manual powered tools, making these things one pair at a time, custom fit to your foot. And I, you know, I talked about that brand then, uh, they've actually rebranded now to Creosote Boots. And at $900, again, not cheap, I broke it down because he told me that they, you know, it took about 40 to 50 hours to make a pair of boots. Again, all hand done. So when you break that down, that's a bargain. Now at $1,200 where they currently sit at, 12, 13, $1,400, depending on which model you choose, it's still a bargain in the world of hand-sewn boots. But think about it if you had gotten a pair back then, $900 compared to 12 or $1,300 now, that's a decent savings. So not that I'm some predictor of the next big thing, but I do have a brand to bring to your attention today, which reminds me a lot of those early days with MYG handmade when they were still a bargain. The brand is called Field Leathers, but please allow me to set the stage a little bit. Right now, if you wanted to buy a lifetime leather jacket, the options are many. Real McCoys, Freewheelers, Goodwear Leather, Himmel Brothers, etc., mostly priced at $2,000 and up. If you want your jacket made from Shinky Horsehide, which is considered by many to be the ultimate leather jacket material, it will come at a premium since the leather is very expensive, but absolutely worth the price. There's nothing quite like Shinky Horsehide, but then again, the list of brands gets smaller. In fact, on the continent of North America, there are only two guys who can get their hands on this stuff, John Chapman of Goodwear Leather and Dave Himmel of Himmel Brothers. Let's take it one step further. Let's say that you want a Shinky Horsehide jacket, which is custom made to your measurements. Well, the list gets even smaller still. As a matter of fact, as far as I can remember, if I'm not mistaken, I think Dave Himmel is the only guy on the continent who can make your jacket custom made out of Shinky Horsehide. But let's take it a step further. If you're like me and built like a traditional Eastern European, most of these Japanese brands may not fit you. So. You want a custom made leather jacket out of Shinky Horsehide? The only option that I was aware of to this point was Dave Himmel from Himmel Bros. And that's why I got my Himmel Brothers jacket. It's phenomenal. I really suggest going with a custom option no matter what, unless you know exactly that one jacket will fit you. This is a leather jacket, it's not a shirt. This is something that you don't wanna get wrong. This is something that will be with you for the rest of your life. So as I mentioned, when I was in this position, I saved up and I bought my $2,500 
Himmel A1 Heron, which is still one of my most prized possessions. There really just weren't a lot of options for what I was looking for. Until now. Greg Field from Field Leathers is a young 33-year-old guy from the east coast of Scotland. He told me that he wasn't a great student growing up, but came from a working class family and that work ethic was instilled in him. This is absolutely something that I can identify with and maybe you can too, but Greg was actually undiagnosed as dyslexic and struggled without really knowing why. Most of the teachers sort of wrote him off and expected that he'd never amount to much of anything, which kind of gave Greg a bit of a chip on his shoulder. After school was finished, Greg did what most of us from working class families do. He went to work. Unfortunately, unskilled labor jobs just don't pay that much, and if he had stayed the course, there's no question that he'd have ended up in a very dark place and living a pretty bleak existence. Thankfully, he became frustrated enough to enroll in a fashion design course, a choice that his family didn't consider a viable career path at all. But luckily, Greg is a determined guy and he graduated with honors in 2012, despite learning about his dyslexia only halfway through his honors year. Within a few weeks, Greg began working at Arrow Leathers and fell in love with the art of leather jacket making. In fact, I know that people would specifically want their jackets to be made by Greg over at Arrow thanks to his meticulous craftsmanship. At one of the most respected leather jacket companies, he was one of the best craftsmen that they had. Greg wanted more though, and he dreamed of moving to America where he had a job lined up with John Chapman of Goodwear Leather, which I had mentioned previously. Unfortunately though, this fell through due to external circumstances, but Greg being the guy that he is, saw the silver lining and decided to start his own business. Working out of a modest shop, Greg invested the money he had saved and bought the tools and equipment he needed to get started. Bringing all of his knowledge with him, he began doing what he does best making leather jackets. And that brings us to the current day. Greg is working away in his workshop. The guy that you wanted making your leather jacket at the big company is now making them one at a time for you to your measurements. And of course, this nice story doesn't mean much of anything if the leather jacket is crap. So I have one of Greg's jackets to show you. Now, does it stack up, especially being a guy who owns several bespoke pieces and sort of knows my own measurements and how things should fit? How does it stack up against a lot of those bigger players? In a word, excellent. We decided to go with a black Shinky T-Core horsehide leather, brass hardware, and custom wool lining. Now, T-Core leather is awesome. It's essentially leather which isn't dyed all the way through, so in time, the inner color will show through in areas where the dye wears off. To me, this is even more appealing than denim fades and will last a hell of a lot longer. I wanted a wool lining since here in New England things get a bit chilly, so Greg let me pick out this gorgeous pattern which I felt offered a cool contrast to the dark and sober exterior. It's, it's like a tropical paradise wrapped in storm clouds. Now I'm not one to go nuts over stitching like my buddy Jake over at Almost Vintage Style, but I can't find any spots where things just went wrong. All the stitching is neat and tidy. Originally, Greg didn't offer brass hardware, and I personally don't care much for bright chrome on black leather. To me, it just looks too easy. You can go to the mall and get a black leather jacket with chrome hardware from a dozen shops, but brass hardware, on the other hand, it just seems to have a bit more attitude to it, and I like to think of the best pieces as having almost a personality. Luckily, Greg was able to get his hands on some of these amazing reproduction talon zippers and fulfill my brass hardware dreams. The design is a pretty restrained half belt with a single chest pocket, two slash hand warmer pockets, and one internal pocket. Side adjusters allow contraction and expansion as needed if more layers are worn beneath. What I like about this style is that it acts as a vehicle for the leather itself. It's not too complicated or intricate, so anyone passing by will just think it's a nice leather jacket that fits well. Only nerds like me will know better. This is the type of high quality, low key style that I really identify with. Walk quietly and carry a big stick. The way Greg gets your fit perfect is a unique approach I've only seen once before and that was in the world of custom suiting. He asks you to take body measurements and then makes you a jacket out of cotton as a try on piece. Then you give him feedback based on that pattern and you really hone in your perfect fit. I've got to say though, his try-on jackets are awesome, and there's no reason you can't just wear this thing after you get the leather version. This process though is expensive, being an extra hundred euros, 
but next to being measured in person, it's the best way to get your fit just right. My jacket is nearly perfect. It fits excellent where it counts, the shoulders, the chest, the sleeves, and all the things I discussed with Greg when ordering this jacket came out perfectly, but the one place we couldn't quite decide together was the hem. And in retrospect, I would have brought it in just a tad more, but now we're really splitting hairs, and when it comes to layering, I may be thankful to have that extra space. When I get an unlined jacket from Field Leathers, though, I'll slim it down just a bit. Now, along with all the benefits of dealing with a small shop comes the understanding that you may need to be patient. Currently, Greg is not only the maker, but the customer service department, social media manager, shipping and receiving, etc. So, getting your jacket may take a while, but my advice is just relax. You're buying something that you'll have for the rest of your life in a way that people used to buy things before two-day Amazon shipping. Get it right and enjoy the process. Greg's a friendly guy, and dealing with him is very, very easy. So just to summarize, here we have a craftsman who honed his skills at one of the best known leather jacket companies out there, struck out on his own, is making his own patterns using awesome material and offers a bespoke option. Now, all of that for just about half what it would cost you from any other maker out there. My jacket here, even with all the upgrades there, you know, the bespoke option, the wool lining, all that stuff came in just over $1,300. And if you decide to go without any of those options and you want to just get an off the rack model from Greg, well, it'll cost you pretty close to a thousand bucks. Now we're talking about in the ballpark of like shot jackets and you can get something that's made to you. Now, am I saying that you can get in on the ground floor of the next big thing? Maybe not. But if Greg keeps pushing forward at the way he has and keeps that work ethic and refining all of his processes, you may very well be able to get a jacket right now, which will be almost double the price several years from now. As Greg has to scale his business, he's going to have no choice but to increase his prices. That's just the way business goes. So if you've always dreamed about owning a shinky jacket custom made to you but couldn't swing the... $2,000 plus price tag, well, this is probably the best option I can think of. And it is the least expensive Shinky horsehide jacket available today. So, no brainer in my opinion. And if you're interested, I have listed um, and linked Greg's shop below in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know what you think of this leather jacket, and I'll catch you next time.